Hello and welcome back to Pankarni on Developer Program Structure Track. This lesson we're going to discuss another sample program which is yung pag-simplify na fractions. Yung pinakita nga natin dun sa overview na sample programs, yung simplifying fractions is just like this. Kaya 45 over 120 is equal to 3 over 8. At makukuha natin yan gamit yung greatest common divisor. Kasi di-divide na yung numerator and denominator using yung GCD. So, pandaan ko ni GCD. In GCD, there's a really good na way para mahanap siya. So, approach yun is yung Euclidean method. Dalawang steps lang yan talaga na gagawin mo lang pa ulit-ulit. So, to find the GCD of two numbers, say it's S and T. Una, alamin mo kung yung remainder ng S divided by T is zero. So, kung yung remainder is zero, isa sa kanila, which is yung T, is the greatest common divisor. Kasi nga, na-divide mo siya eh. Otherwise, yung GCD nung dalawang number na yun is just the same as the greatest common divisor of yung T mo at yung remainder ng S divided by T. So, parang uulit-ulitin mo siya. Di-divide mo siya kung anin mo yung remainder at uulit-ulitin mo yung process until makuha ka ng exactong division. So, walang remainder. So, try na itong approach na ito dun sa ating example which is yung 120 at 45. So, first step, di-divide mo yung 120 by 45. So, yun, may remainder yun na 30. So, hindi siya gagana dun sa first step na kailangan 0 yung remainder. So, hindi pa siya yung greatest common divisor natin. Kaya, move on tayo sa next step. Again, yung next step, kukunin na yung greatest common divisor ngayon ng T at yung remainder ng S over T. Which is, in this case, is 30. So, kita natin, 40 at 30 ngayon. Divide na sila ng dalawa, makuha natin remainder is 15. So, hindi pa na nakukuha yung greatest common divisor kasi hindi pa tayo nagre-remainder 0. So, yung next would be yung unang number natin would be yung T which is 30. Then, yung second number natin is yung remainder which is 15. So, magiging 30 divided by 15 at may kita natin na yung remainder is 0. Kaya, following yung conditions ng step 1 natin, may kita natin ang greatest common divisor ng 120 and 45 is 15. So, yun. Pag inulit-ulit na yung proseso, nakukuha natin yung isang value, which is yung greatest common divisor natin. If you want, you could try that with other numbers. So, for example, tignan natin isang pair ng numbers na walang greatest common divisor. Parang ito yung tinatawag mga co-prime or relatively prime numbers. Mahilig kayo sa math. So, kuha natin 13 and 5. 13 divided by 5, remainder niya is 3. So, apply natin yung 5 at 3. 5 divided by 3, remainder is 2. So, hindi pa rin. Then, 3 divided by 2, may remainder pa rin siya which is 1. Then, finally, 2 divided by 1 is 0. So, ang greatest common divisor nila is 1. And if you remember na lahat ng number ay pwede ma-divide by 1. So, ang dating nun is yung pinaka-common na divisor nila is yung common na divisor sa lahat ng number. So, they really don't have anything in common in terms of their divisors, in terms of their factors. Ngayon, may dalawa tayong example. Yung isang example, meron tayong nahanap na greatest common divisor, ito meron tayong nahanap na isang greatest common divisor pero it's not really that useful kasi lahat naman ng number ganyan yung greatest common divisor eh. So, yun yung examples. Move on na tayo dun sa ating wala na version ng ating greatest common divisor na function. So, it's just this, func gcd number 1, number 2. If number 2 is 0, which is, may kita na later, ito yung remainder return yung number 1. Otherwise, kukol mo lang yung GCD. Parang ikukol mo yung sariling function passing yung second number, which is yung T dati, then num mod num2. So, yung mod na to is modulo. Modulo is almost the same as getting the remainder, pero hindi na namin dadaanan yun. At this point, pag nakita nyo yung mod na yan, let's just say na yung number sa kaliwa, Di-divide mo sa number sa kanan at kukunin mo yung remainder nila. So, yun yung modulo. 
So, that's just the remainder. So, ayan. Ito yung ginawa natin. Sinundan lang natin yung steps natin. So, kukol mo ulit yung GCD. Kukol mo sarili niya. At ipapasa mo sa kanya yung second number ngayon. Pati yung remainder ng dalawang numbers. So, hindi lang yun yung ating program. Kailangan rin natin i-gawin yung mismong pag-simplify ng fractions. Kukuha tayo ng input ng isa fraction at lalabas natin yung simplified na fraction. So in this case, ang ginawa natin sa program is kukuha tayo ng numerator at denominator galing dun sa user. So that's the user input. And a-output natin isang string na nagsasabi na yung simplified fraction is something. So yun lang yung whole program natin, yun yung whole solution natin dun sa problem na kailangan natin mag-simplify ng fraction. Okay, so daanan natin to, just a quick run through nung program. First statement is kukunin natin yung numerator. So this is a call to the function input, which is we're going to define later, na nagdi-display ng text and allows user to input something. At kung ano yung input niya, yun yung evaluated yung expression na yun which in turn ma-assign dun sa numerator. So ayan, enter numerator, 45, then so numerator natin is 45. Denominator naman, same ang ginawa natin sa kanya, that's the second statement, diretso na tayo, ginawa natin 120. Then the next is common divisor. Para makuha yung common divisor, i-call natin yung function na GCD. At this point, baka magtaka kayo, bakit tayo nag-umpisa dito sa unang tatlong statements na to? Kung tignan natin yung source natin, yung program natin, dapat nag-umpisa tayo dun sa funk GCD. Ang sagot dyan is yung funk GCD, yung entire part na to, na highlight na to, is just a function declaration. Hindi pa tinatawag yung function dyan. So, sinasabi mo lang sa computer, ito yung ginagawa ng function. But at that point, hindi yung pa siya ginagamit. So, when you are running a program na inside sa isang programming language kagaya ng wala, hindi mo irarun yung function. Kasi well, hindi, hindi pa naman yun yung time na ginagamit yung function. You're just declaring the function. Kaya ang umbisan mo is yung statements na pwede mong patakbuhin. Which is, in this case, yung numerator natin na pinakita kanina. So, dito na tayo, balik tayo dun sa common divisor, dito na natin kinocall yung function na dineclare natin na GCD. In this case, call natin yung GCD sa denominator and numerator. Yun, call natin 120 and 45. Bakit inuna natin yung 120 at sinunod na lang na yung 45, hindi yung the other way around? Well, wala naman pinagkaiba sila when it comes to calculation kung binaliktad mo sila. Nagkataon lang na pag ganito yung ordering natin, we have one less iteration, one less level dun sa ating pag-calculate ng GCD. At we'll leave that as an assignment to you para malaman nyo kung ano mangyayari kung binaliktad mo yun. But essentially, the result would be the same. Anyway, balik tayo rito. So, call na GCD. Num1 is 120. Num2 is 45. Check natin if num2 is 0, which is false. So, to lose tayo sa pangalawa, kukol natin yung GCD num2 and num1 mod num2. Num1 mod num2 is just 30, which is yung yung discuss natin before. So, that's just this other layer na ang pag-call natin. Another level na kinol natin yung GCD. In this case, instead na yung num1 natin is 120, in this case, ang num1 natin ngayon is 45. Again, this is black box kasi nag-call tayo ng function within the function. So, it's going to be a level lower. So, it's going to be another level. It's not really level lower. Pero yun, level higher. But it's on a different scope. So, yun. 45 and 30. Pag sundan natin yan, same thing mayayari. Ang mukuha natin ngayon is 30, 15. Bago, a bunch of steps later, aabot tayo did sa point na to. Meron pa tayong isang extra step. Hindi ko nalagay kasi magkakasyon sa slide natin. So, yan. Aabot tayo sa point ng num1 natin is 15, num2 na is 0. So, pagdating dito, sa pag-check ng num2 is equal to 0, may kuha natin is num2 is equal to 0. So, doon na. Magre-return na siya. So, re-return natin 15. And nagkataon na pag-return mo na doon, ang unang statement na makikita mo is a return din. So, in essence, i-re-return ulit niya 
yung 15. And in the process, magkakaskade yung return. Parang tuloy-tuloy lang yung return pabalik dun sa kung sino man unang tumawag sa kanya. And in this case, yun niya, 15, nagkakaskade siya pataas. Back dun sa ating unang tumawag, which is yung statement na to. And evaluate the statement. Mukha natin is common divisor is equal to the return value, which is 15. And finally, we have this part, yung final statement natin. Output, the simplified fraction is plus numerator over common divisor plus slash symbol plus slash character plus denominator over common divisor. Yung whole string plus numerator over the common divisor, that would be evaluated as an entire string which is yung output natin. And eventually, ang makuha natin is itong string na to, which is output to the user, whether it's displayed on screen or whatever. Yun na yung ating simplifying fraction. And like dun sa example natin dun sa square root, just follow the links na nag-pop up habang dinidiscuss natin to. So, balikan nyo lang yung mga sections na yun and click nyo na lang yung mga appropriate lesson dun sa part ng program na yun. Or, kung natamad kayo mag bumalik dun sa part na yun, mag-scroll down lang kayo at tignan nyo yung mga links sa ilalim which eventually, yun na rin yun eh.